Um, my name is Nicole McClelland. I go by Nikki McClelland. Um, I'm the widow of the fire chief, Darren McClelland of Swift Current Fire Department. I grew up in Hodgeville, Saskatchewan, not very far away. So I lived there all my life up, in, up until grade 12. I actually met Darren. He was from Mancota, another neighboring town, uh, about an hour away from us. And he played hockey against my brother. We dated for four years, um, got married at, I think I was 21. And uh, he went to, before that, sorry, he went to Saskatoon to EMT, to take his EMT. And I moved to Swift Current right out of high school and went to school here. And he, uh, he moved back down here, got a job at the, at the Swift Current Ambulance. We just started out as a young, young family. We, we were young and Darren got on the fire department and two, in 1997, September 11th, 1997, he got on the fire hall and he was probably one of the most excited men in the world. He got to be a firefighter, his, his high school dream to be a firefighter. So he got that and we just grew up in Swift Current. We haven't really done anything. We haven't moved anywhere. Um, and then he became a deputy with the fire department and I've been kind of in the same same industry of the job here and we just had a kind of a we've had an amazing life actually kind of a great life just our, our firefighters are our family and I wouldn't I don't know where I'd be without them it probably started the summer of 2016 Darren was we were finding Darren was waking up in the middle of the night going to the bathroom a lot more often than what maybe would be normal and uh, and when he went to the washroom, you could just tell something was not right. So I was kind of hounding him a little bit. I'm like, Darren, something's wrong. Like, and he's just like, oh yeah, I just got to change my diet. Oh, I'm just eating eating too much bread. I'm I have too much dairy. I'm lactose intolerant. There's a lot of excuses that went with why he's going to the washroom more. And it wasn't so much, it was at night when we really noticed it, that, that he was doing this in the, in the evenings. And uh, I, 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 I guess I like to, I would like to kind of say that I like on him a little bit going, you need to go to the doctor. Something's, something doesn't sound right. Something's not right with you. This is not normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Darren's usually proactive and as a firefighter, you do, get medicals every year. So Darren was very on top of his medicals and he was very on top of all that. Darren was healthy. He never smoked. He, you know, the casual drink, he, he, he wasn't, he ate very good, worked out, took care of himself. So go to our family doctor and uh, doctors, oh, everything's probably all right, but we'll send you for a colonoscopy. So August 29th, we went to Regina for a colonoscopy. And they said to me, just wait here. It won't take very long. We'll, we'll come, we'll come get you when he's done. And uh, about three hours later, he wasn't out. And I knew, I was just like, okay, what's going on? What, why is this taking so long if it's just a regular colonoscopy? So I remember going to the, the nurse's desk and looking for Darren and he was in a room all by himself. And I walked in to see him and he goes, Nick, something's wrong. I can just, he just looked worried. So we waited for the doctor to come in. And the doctor was just like, we are gonna send you for a CT scan. We, we know we found something abnormal and we're, we're gonna look into this a little further. We had to stay in the hospital later that, till that later that night and did a X-ray on his, or CT scan on his liver on his abdomen and Darren's like he was of course he's just why are you doing like if I have if there's something going on in my colon why are you taking CTs of my my chest little did we know they're looking for to see if it's already how far it's advanced at the time we didn't know that but so anyway um, they sent us home and we got a call from the doctor within the next day or two and we had to go to the cancer clinic and discuss cancer. Within five days, they got him into, into the hospital and got a colon removed, 11 centimeters. 
so that was the start of that, um, getting his a part of his colon removed. And then um, shortly after we find out that it's in his liver, there's a couple spots in his liver that metastasize into his liver. And we had to now figure out how we're gonna go through that. So we started the chemo treatments. He started the chemo treatments right, as soon as he could recover from the surgery, from his colon resection. And then he, he had to wait eight weeks, six to eight weeks, and then start chemo. And he had 12 rounds. Every two weeks he had to go in to get chemo. And then in March, after his six months of treatment, in March he had to go and um, do a liver uh, surgery to try to get the, the spot out of the liver. So that was another six weeks recovery and it was successful. They got it. They were very happy with that surgery. So two months we had a checkup and we, Darren was feeling fine and he's like, you know, Nick, I think we got it. I feel good about this. Like there's, we got the, the colon taken care of. We got the cancer in the liver taken care of. And then we went up for a checkup two months after and there's another spot on his liver. A couple more spots on his liver. And then they made him do six more rounds of chemo. So another six months, or 12 rounds of chemo, another six months of chemo. And then we done that. And it just, just keep coming back. I feel like we'd get one or two and there'd be more. And we'd always just be behind the eight ball. Like we never would ever get ahead of it. This more came and then we just, um, he had it, then he, had another surgery and took a chunk of his liver this time. They took a, a fair, a, a section out of his liver. So he's had now pretty hardcore surgeries and chemos in the last, in the year and a half. I never wanted to go with nothing unturned. Like I wanted to turn every rock to make sure we, we tried everything. We tried chemo, we tried this, we tried that. But I didn't, Darren was on every, health plan, eating right, cut out sugar, cut out everything. We, he did everything. Anything that says, well, this, you know, we tried this or do this. And we tried everything. He was a trooper. He was a fighter. He was always game to do something to save his life. So that whole summer, he just had a pain in his back and he could never shake it. We could chiropractor, would go for massage. He would do things to kind of help maybe just has a bad back. Darren's family wanted to go to Mexico back in the spring. So we planned this trip to do a family vacation in December. And we were all excited to go and we knew Darren's situation. So we all wanted to be together in December. So as I'm driving to Calgary to fly out, he starts going, huh, the bottom of my foot tingles. It's getting numb. Yeah, okay, like we didn't, you know, we're heading on a plane. Get to Mexico, get situated, have a couple days on the beach. Darren's not feeling that great. We're all kind of just, oh, geez. By Wednesday, his whole right foot and most of his left, he could hardly, they were just tingly and numb and he could hardly, he could, they were very tender and he could hardly walk. By the end of the trip, he needed support. He needed support to walk, got to the airport, had to get him a wheelchair, got him to, we had some friends in Calgary and they helped, helped us get to the foothills of, and we spent the night in the foothills of Calgary. They just said, get home and get some MRIs done. So we drove the next day all the way home. We went to the hospital in Swift Current, spent the night in the ER in Swift Current. So we spent the night in ER in Calgary Foothills, Swift Current, and then the next day our family doctor just said, you have a tumor in your spine and it's pinching the nerve. That's why he couldn't walk. And that's probably what was causing the back pain. Nobody, it was just small and no one could see it. So then got him to Regina, spent the night in in the ER in Regina. And then they decided that they were gonna do a surgery to, 
take the tumor off the spine just to relieve some pain and pressure because he was in so much pain. So another surgery. And this was just before Christmas. So after surgery, he was doing fine. He was looking better. He was feeling better. Pain was gone. And I, I personally think the surgery opening him up just went like wildfire. I, I don't know any other way because he was, you know, I know he had cancer and he was in pain, but he just went really quick. So he was doing good in Regina. So they sent him back to Swift Current to spend Christmas in the hospital in Swift Current so he could be with us and the family. And, and then he was doing the physio and walking and they were getting him to move again with his legs. And then mid-January, he turned jaundice. He was getting weaker. He wouldn't want to eat. And a long story short, the month within the month of us getting back from just in December of our holiday, he died January 20th, 2020. That is the journey. And he fought really, really hard. And he was just this guy that he was good at anything he did. He played hockey. He was an all-star. He was good at ball. He was good at sports. He had a green thumb. He could make anything with carpentry like he 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 was just amazing at everything and out of this whole thing I just he, he was gonna beat this he could beat anything he was Darren McClelland <laughs> there was just no way I couldn't see anything but having a long life together you know what I mean like he was just Darren McClelland My daughters, <laughs> Ashley was 19, Haley was 16 when they got diagnosed, when Darren got diagnosed with cancer. Ash was just in her second year of college and Haley was 16 going into, I don't even know, grade 10 or grade 11. And I feel bad for Haley in a way that we were so focused on Darren. She, she just put her on the back burner. Like these are supposed to be the best years of her life too. And Ash's second year of college. And we just, you know, they just, they just lost so much of their childhood. And it stole so much away from them because they had to grow up in a, they had to mature and grow up in a, in a hurry and deal with some pretty heavy stuff that no child should have to go through and see their dad, their hero. He was their hero. He was always there for them. Hey, Dad, how do you do this? They always went to Dad. They didn't go to me. <laughs> they were always, Dad, how do you do this? How do I do that? Dad, do this, Dad. And he was always... He was a support, supportive one. And I, watching them in the last year and a half, we're all grieving in our own ways. We all have, I'm grieving because I lost my husband. I lost my best friend. The girls are grieving because they lost their, their hero. They've lost their mentor. They've lost their, moral compass <laughs> you know this winter they phoned me both of them mom i got a flat tire mom my battery's died mom how do i get my lawnmower to start how do i ashley bought a house right after darren passed away and she's got this house this responsibility these bills to pay and it just i don't know this stuff this is all dad. You're supposed to go to your dad. The girls are strong. 
they're very strong and they've had to grow up really quick and I'm proud of them I'm very proud of my girls time has moved mountains for us we got to do great things meet the most amazing people but time is also something that waits for no one I want to challenge you to enjoy the time you have but please don't waste it. Don't waste this time. Take it from me. Time is precious. It's a precious gift. Embrace it. Don't take it for granted and enjoy life to its fullest. If I am going to talk as positively as I can that Darren got cancer, as much as we all know that it's not good and it, I never wanted to go down this path but Darren getting colon cancer workers comp covering it financially we didn't have to worry about money I could take time off work and they would reimburse me for my time I could be with Darren I know there's times where I couldn't go take Darren to chemo so my daughters did Ashley took them they paid for her gas they paid for her mileage they, you know it's it was just a burden that we did not have to worry about and the support like if we needed if we needed counseling or any it, they, they were they promoted it yeah they were good to Darren what I would say and I know most firefighters, their, their way of thinking and their characteristics and their, it, it won't happen to me. You're 21, you're 22, whatever, you're young. This won't happen to me. I'm strong. I won't get cancer. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Darren. I'd have never thought in a million years this would have happened to Darren, or this is my life now. This happening to Darren, and I am, I am not just going to say Darren. We had a friend, we lost Wyatt Evans three years before Darren to cancer. Our little department lost two great guys in three years. And something needs to be done about it, because it's, it's, worldwide, good men, good women, saving lives every day, putting theirs in jeopardy and their families. And every fire department needs to be on board with better gear, better oxygen masks, anything on how to keep those chemicals out of your system. Don't say this is, be it won't happen to me, it's gonna be okay. Cause it can change your life in an instant. It's, it was like that. I don't want anybody laying in bed. Scared to death to go to sleep because you just don't know if you're gonna wake up in the morning or when, when. I don't want anybody to live this life that I and me and my girls have to live. And if you can get it before it gets you, 